Hello, thank you so much for joining me on this great day, July 4th, Independence Day. The title of our post today is What It Means to Be an American. On this special day, July 4th, I have asked my friend, Major William Oston, retired, to write the Give Him 15 post. Some of you know that Will gave me my first Appeal to Heaven flag and introduced me to its history. He is a great lover of God and country. Will begins... In honor of the, of the 150th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, President Calvin Coolidge said, and he quotes him, it is often asserted that the world has made a great deal of progress since 1776 and that we may therefore very well discard their conclusions for something more modern. But that reasoning cannot be applied to this great charter. If all men are created equal, that is final. If they are endowed with unalienable rights, that's final. If governments derive their powers from the consent of the governed, that is final. No advance, no progress can be made beyond these propositions. End of President Coolidge's quote. We are now 96 years past the time President Coolidge spoke those prescient words and 246 years out from the signing of that exceptional document. As Coolidge so aptly pointed out, many would want us to look at the progress, our progress in quotes, our nation has made and conclude that it would be appropriate to exchange a doc document so antiquated with something more modern. But we would be foolish to look upon our declaration in this way. We must instead educate ourselves and our children on the ways in which our founders set up a lasting and powerful foundation one that was designed to protect our God-given rights and foster a republic in which we could live out those freedoms. Some Americans buy into the leftist ideology that bombards us at every turn, stating that our founding documents are oppressive, discriminatory, and outdated. Those who oppose the content object on the basis of our nation's past moral failings. However, we can unconditionally own the sins of our past without discarding the framework of liberty passed down to us. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. End quote from Dr. King. The misguided objections of some in our current culture could not be further from the truth. 1776 Project states it this way. America's founding principles are true, not because any generation, including our own, has lived them perfectly, but because they're based upon the eternal truths of the human condition. They're rooted in our capacity for evil, and power for good, our longing for truth and striving for justice, our need for order, and our love of freedom. Above all else, these principles recognize the worth, equality, potential, dignity, and glory of each and every man, woman, and child created in the image of God. 
To understand the brilliance behind the infrastructure our founding fathers created for us, we must look at the ways in which the documents are based on timeless biblical ideas of man and government. These ideals have fostered a sacred freedom scarcely found elsewhere in the world. In fact, Will says, historians have found that the average lifespan of a written national constitution is, are you ready for this? 17 years. With the founding documents of other nations proving to be so fragile, Americans must appreciate the durability of our own founding documents. Historian Stephen McDowell has found that, quote, the reason America has endured so long is because our documents are based on one other, even longer enduring document, the Bible, end quote. In honor of our Independence Day, Will says, let's take a closer look at our nation's Declaration of Independence, which has far surpassed the 17-year lasting average of such documents. The biblical ideas found within can be summed up in the four and the following four points, followed by exact wording from the declaration itself. In other words, he makes a point, he gives you then the quote in the declaration from where it he finds it. First of all, all men are equal. The declaration says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Secondly, man being created in the divine image has independent value. The declaration says that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thirdly, man is superior to the state or the government. And the declaration says that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. And fourthly, that the state or government exists for man. Not the other way around, he's saying. We don't exist for government. They exist for us. And the declaration says, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. And it says, whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government. He goes on to say the declaration also directly refers to God four times. Number one, it says the laws of nature and of nature's God. Number two, men are created equal and endowed by their creator. Number three, appealing to the supreme judge of the world and fourthly, it says, and for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Four times in our founding document. Don't tell me these people did not know they were establishing this nation under God. Will says, in their own words, the signer stated again and again, that our nation would not succeed apart from God. They understood that the exceptionalism of the great experiment, which they fondly called it, was directly rooted in the fact that the people who gave consent to be governed did so with the understanding of what it meant to live in a society governed by biblical truths and that they must actively and intentionally fight to protect those truths in each generation that followed. Is it not obvious then that our cause as Christian Americans living in this current culture is to uphold the biblical ideas of our founding and our government? 
We must remind ourselves of where we've come from and the foundations upon which we stand, that the documents themselves do not grant us freedom, but they profoundly recognize the free, that freedom is something granted from God. We've been entrusted to protect it. To that end, let us consider what it means to live in a nation that acknowledges God-given equality, unalienable rights, and liberty for all. What a vital and honorable responsibility it is to steward these foundational ideals. And he lists, <coughs> excuse me, he lists several here. To be an American is something noble and good. To be an American is to be full of optimism for the future. To be an American is to be marked by determination to fight for what is right. To be an American is to be full of kindness toward those in need. To be an American is to show courage in the face of adversity. To be an American is to embrace hard work and be generous with the fruit of our labor. To be an American is to learn from our mistakes with openness and honesty. To be an American is to instill these values in the next generation. Frederick Douglass understood this profound responsibility of the American people when he said, and he quotes him, the Declaration of Independence is the ring bolt to the chain of your nation's destiny. So indeed, I regard it. The principles contained in that instrument are saving principles. Stand by those principles, be true to them on all occasions, in all places, against all foes, and whatever the cost." End quote. So William concludes by saying, fellow Americans, brothers and sisters, as you celebrate our Independence Day, would you resolve once again to uphold and embody the biblical ideals laid out in the Declaration? Pass them on to your children and fight to preserve the truths on which our nation rests because isn't that, after all, what it means to be an American? Amen. Well, let's pray with will. Heavenly Father, we come first with hearts full of gratitude for the liberties we enjoy in America. We see your hand throughout our foundations and thank you that our founders were guided by your truths laid out in the Bible and that they recognized our republic cannot stand apart from you. Would you open the eyes of our nation, Lord, to see the biblical principles at the core of our founding? Please silence the voice of the enemy that would seek to discredit our heritage, and bring our nation to ruin. Empower us to renew our resolve to live out the biblical ideals necessary for the preservation of this country. Do this in order that America will once again be a city on a hill shining brightly to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name, we pray this. Amen. And the decree is, we declare that America will once again embrace her God-given heritage. Amen. William J. Oston is a medically retired U.S. Army major and combat veteran of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's the founder and president of Ark of Justice, a nonprofit organization that advocates for wounded warriors still on active duty. Will and his wife, Jennifer, are currently spearheading the Wounded Warrior Bill of Rights, H.R. 8081, in Congress. 
You can find out more about their story using the link we provided to arcofjusticeusa.org. I encourage you on this special day, if you can, God leads you to send a, a generous gift to this organization. I call it a ministry. It's what it is. It ministers to people, our soldiers, our wounded warriors, uh, doing a great job. Bill and Jennifer literally bleed the red, white, and blue. They love this nation, and he serves serves it still, sacrificially through his pain and, and injuries. So if the Lord leads you to, send him a generous gift. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day with your family and friends, and I'll see you tomorrow.